We'll be looking at the pathway to rest. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. It will be our anchor scripture. The scripture says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the, in the ways or in the path, and see and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. So we begin to understand from this scripture that there is a pathway that leads to rest in diverse areas of our lives, in diverse aspects, maybe in your business, in your career, in your academics, in your spiritual life, there is a path in our kingdom, in God's kingdom, there are pathways to different destinations. So when you want to achieve a particular result, there is a particular path you can take and once you take that path, you can be sure that you will arrive at that destination. So the scripture says, Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. When the scripture talks about old paths, it's not talking about paths that are um, worn out, paths that are not good again, paths that are old, that you cannot make use of. He's talking about the ancient paths, the paths that our fathers have walked in. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 2 would say that is um, um by faith our el- the, our elders our fathers have obtained a good result so there is a pathway that our fathers have walked in that gave them the results that they got and the scripture is saying if you desire this result there is the old path that you must walk in but sometimes scriptures end with with this kind of this thing we will not walk therein so it's this happening when god's desire is for his children to end up in a good place but due to our disobedience we are not able to walk in those paths so this morning we want to quickly look at what god how god wants us to operate in the kingdom so there are three things that um, we can see from that scripture it says stand here in the ways see and ask to walk therein and then rest will come to you so the first one is stand Stand ye in the ways. What does it mean to stand? It means that it says stand ye in the ways. It means that you are at a point where there are many options. It means that you are standing at a place where there are diverse ways that you can take. But the first instruction from God is stand. It means that you should not be hasty in, 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 in going any particular direction. It means that you should stand and take rest in God first of all. You should stand and be still and hear where God will have you go. He says, stand here in the ways. So in, in the diverse aspects of our lives, we are not meant to take hasty decisions. God is asking us not to take hasty decisions. When you are faced with many options, it's left for us to stand in the ways. In the story of the, the donkey that Jesus used for his triumphant entry, the scripture says that he sent the two disciples and told them you will find a cord tied at the crossroad. It means that that donkey was tied at the crossroad. So there were many options for the donkey, but the donkey chose to be tied See, the master sent for him. So in our daily lives, we must remain tied until the instruction of God comes. If not, we are going to miss the way. Psalm 46 verse 10. The message translation says, step out of the traffic. When you talk about traffic, it talks about, you know, many things happening at once. The life that we are in now is a busy kind of life. So there are many things to do. There are many options to take. There are many things that, you know, can easily, that you can easily go into. But the scripture is saying, stand out of the traffic. Step out of the business of life. Step out of your busy schedule. Take a long, loving look at me, your high God. So the first thing that God is calling our attention this morning to is that we need to learn to be still. The scripture will say in Isaiah, we'll still read it, Isaiah 30 verse 15. It says, in quietness and in stillness shall be your peace, shall be your your salvation. We see a story in 1 Samuel chapter 13 from verse 8, talking about King Saul. He said, then he waited seven days. King Saul was waiting for Samuel to come 
for him to offer the sacrifice for progress to happen. But the scripture says that King Saul waited seven days according to the time set by Samuel. So Prophet Samuel told him, I am going to come in seven days time. And he was patient to wait for the seven days. But the scripture says, but Samuel did not come to Gilga and the people were scattered from him. So it's, it's as though the situations of life are, are beginning to scatter as it were. So you are at the point that you are waiting and it seems as if that you are waiting in vain. It seems as if that the situations of life are beginning to slip out of your hands and you will at that point it's easy to just say ah let me just do this but the scripture says stand in the ways so Saul said bring me a bond offering so because people were scattering from him he decided to make a hasty decision he says bring me a bond offering and peace offerings here to me and he offered the bond offering now it happened that as soon as he had finished presenting this bond offering that Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him that he might greet him. And Samuel said, what have you done? Saul said, when I saw that the people were scattered from me, when I saw that I was not getting any results as it were, when I saw that people were beginning to mock me that I don't have anything to show in my life, I decided to make a hasty decision. The next slide. Then I said, the Philistines will now come down on me at Giga, and I have not made supplication to the Lord. So you see that King Saul, he was actually, you know, you know, you know, trying to take the procedure. You know, in those days, as the nation of Israel, you you allow God to lead you to the battle. So you offer your burnt offering, you offer your sacrifices before any battle. So that was what King Saul was waiting for, but he was not qualified to do it. He was not in his place to, to make that, that sacrifice. So he said, therefore, I felt compelled and I offered the burnt offerings. So I don't know if the situations in your life are compelling you not to wait for God. If the situations in your life are compelling you not to, you know, to stand and ask for the old path. So you want the path that is easy, seemingly easy. So you don't want to pay the price to sit and find out the ancient path that our fathers have walked. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now, the Lord would have established your kingdom forever. 14. But now your kingdom shall not continue. It means that when we take hasty decisions, we lose the kingdom of God. When we take decisions that are not in line with the will of God, we lose his kingdom. We, we, the, the kingdom of God will not be established in our lives in that area that we are seeking God for. So the first thing God wants us to do is to stand still. He says, there that wait upon the Lord. There that wait upon the Lord. A waiter waits. A waiter is not hasty. If you go to a good restaurant, a waiter will stand and wait till you hear, till he hears what you desire. That's the, 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 the significance of that scripture. He says, there that wait upon the Lord. So we must learn not to be compelled to make hasty decisions. We must learn to stand still and hear. Someone says uh, um, that God can never be late. God is not late. So if I'm waiting on God and he's not speaking, it means that it's not time. So Reverend would always say that he always moves at the instruction of God. If God does not say, the voice of God gives you the confidence number one and there is a force that the voice of God brings to you that makes the result come through. So Reverend would always give an example that if you are meant to go to Lagos and God have not said go and you go, you are meant to be in Lagos, you will go. But hearing the voice of the Lord gives you the strength to go. There is something about the voice of the Lord. Isaiah 30 verse 15. It says, For thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall you be saved. So the salvation that we are looking for is in us returning to God and finding rest in Him. In not being hasty. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. So the strength that we are looking for to be able to do the things of life, to be able to carry out the, 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 um, the, our purpose in life is in quietness that we will find that strength. But the scripture also ends with 
but you would not. But I believe that seated here are people that will not be like the people in this scripture. The people that would. Number two, see and ask. Jeremiah 6, 16. It says, stand here in the ways and see and ask for the old parts. It means that when you stand, when you are waiting on the Lord, you are asking, Lord, where is the path for this? So Jesus told his disciples, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And, and at the end of their life, we see that they became fishers of men. So there was a technology that Jesus used to transform them into fishers of men. And two of those are by their observation. They were able to see what Jesus was doing. They followed him. They were observing him. That is the sight. And they were, you know, you know, Jesus was giving them instructions. They were hearing. So when you say ask, it means that you are ready to hear. So sight and sound, sight and hearing are the two things that the scripture talks about here. In Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20 to 23, the scripture says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear. Hear what I am saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. So they are, they are, they are, there is the ear gate and there is the eye gate that gives us the, the, the direction that our life should take. And the scripture is saying, Listen to my words. See my words. Hear my words. Observe your father. Observe the, the he said, by faith, our fathers have obtained the good results. So when we look at our fathers, when we see the way that they do their things, we are able to also see the path of life and we are able to follow therein. He said, for their life. It means that if we don't see and hear, we'll have death. He said, for their life. The opposite is death. For their life. When you receive the word of the Lord, when you receive the word, when you see what God is doing, Jesus will say in John chapter 5 and verse 19, He says, whatsoever I see my father do, that is what I do. He said, the, my father walketh, therefore I walk. So we must pay attention, we must incline. It takes you to be deliberate, to be able to hear, to be able to see. So you must pay attention. He said, pay attention to my word. So you must pay attention. You, that's why, first of all, you must step out of the busyness of life. You must step out of the traffic to be able to hear and to see. It is only when you see that you know where to go. If not, you would make decisions that are not in line with the will of God for your life. Then number three, it says you will walk therein. So even when you stand still, when you see, when you hear, if you don't take this final step, you will not see half the result. You say you will walk therein. You will walk therein. It means that you must ensure that you are walking in accordance to what you have heard. You can walk in accordance to what you have not heard, but it is the, your result will come from what you have heard. He said, you will walk therein. So, as the reverend teaches Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, if you are not careful to walk therein, you will not have the results of that, of those words. James chapter 1, as we end, verse 22 and 23. It says, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any, for if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his face in a glass, for he beholded himself and went his way and shed way, forgetting what man of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth daring, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. It means that it is in your doing that you are blessed. The blessedness is not in the hearing. The blessedness is not in the seeing. The blessedness is in your deeds. What are you doing with what you have heard? What are you doing with what you have seen? That is where your result is an, an effulgence of your actions, not your hearing. Your hearing only prepares you to act. Your, your result is in your action. So can we just bow down as we begin to pray this morning and ask God to give us the strength to fulfill these three parameters, to stand, to see, to hear, and to walk therein. To stand, to see, to hear, and to walk therein. In the name of Jesus. Let's appreciate Pastor OJB. 
Did we get blessed? Yes, sir. All right. You know, uh, and after those four things, it's all the Bible says, and you will find rest for your soul. Believe you me, if there's no rest in his soul, you can hardly get anything done in this life. Because it's in the realm of the soul that you cook a lot of these things. The, the place where understanding comes and all of that. So once the, re- the soul is not at rest, once the soul is busy over nothing, that person's life is stalled. Because productivity comes from there. Even when God speaks to you and it goes through your spirit, do you know you process with your soul? Your soul has your emotions. So if you are unnecessarily emotional and sentimental, your soul houses the will. That is the power to take that action. May you find rest for your souls in Jesus' name. If you are here this morning and you have not given your life to Jesus, I would like to present us an opportunity to do so. It is the greatest decision you will ever take in your life. If you are making that decision this morning, say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I declare you died for my sin. You rose up on a third day. From today, I'm a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. In Jesus' name. Congratulations if you prayed that prayer. Welcome to the body of Christ. Welcome to God's kingdom. Please kindly leave a comment or send us a message on any of our social media handles so that we can send you the relevant materials. God bless you. This message is brought to you by Dunamis and Sophia and part of the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shouts of the Center and Kisses and Hopes Club an online ministry to singles and married couples. Connect with us on Instagram at Pastor Dunamis at Pastor Sophia Bola at Shout to Grace Center at KC underscore global on Facebook at KC Global on YouTube at Dunamis Tunde Noah on MixLR at KC Global Visit our website www.com kcsandhawks.com via our mail at kcpartners at gmail.com to partner with us kcsandhawks.com slash partnership God bless you